Hey, folks. Um, awesome to be here. Um, really cool to be in, on the same stage as Balaji. Um, so we have a parallel financial system with Solana. It's kind of a pun. Solana it has a parallel virtual machine that I think we're famous for. And our goal is to make finance open and better. And um, we like to, we have this kind of silly tagline, only possible on Solana. Um, it's possible in a lot of places, but what I want to kind of hone in on is that what we really kind of got to work really well is we can show that execution, like the thing that, that's really, really hard to prove is actually better on an open decentralized system, and it's going to be mechanically better, like by every measurable objective of measurable thing, performance, latency, cost, it's going to be better running on a decentralized system. And if that's true, it's inevitable that it's going to win. There's just never going to be a time in the future where we believe that centralized kind of financial systems are going to win. Um, so what are we kind of talking about? And I think uh, when you look at like, the Wells Fargo page, there is a bajillion different kind of features that they're offering. And they're all integrated into the bank. They're offered by this centra giant central company that's too big to fail. And uh, without really much help from myself or anyone working on the Solana protocol, there's like 50 different companies that have basically built every one of these features. And all of these companies are all on the same blockchain, run, right, running in the same state machine. And when you interact with them, you can actually interact with all of them in one transaction at a fraction of a cent, literally one hundredth of a penny. And uh, you can talk to all of them at the same time in one atomic state transition and like execute, and you wouldn't even know. And that's really, really cool. It's because they're all sharing the same network state. <laughs> uh, but like literally, <laughs> you don't have to laugh. Terrible, terrible joke. But like when you compare this to like a company like Robinhood, you have 20, like you have nine different companies that have to touch your trade. Each one of them takes a few bips off that trade. It takes multiple days for the actual financial information to go from when you clicked a button to like being reconciled at a settlement facility that finally actually says that, yeah, ownership of something changed. On Solana, you got like a $20 order can go through, what is that, like eight different markets run by different protocols, run by different companies. There's no fees between any of them, right? You have one giant transaction that's completely composed and executed immediately. Um, and this actually scales. The way you think of it is not that it scales to a larger number, right? Because if we go to like a million dollars, it's obvious that you can go and talk to nine companies to settle a million dollars. But this scales the other way. You can actually shrink this order down to like 20 cents, and it'll still go through four different companies. Like, and that's crazy to think about, like a micropayment that touches four different OTC desks. Like, that would be insane, right, in, in normal finance. But that's totally doable in one giant, highly optimized state machine. Um, so this company code, they literally built a product for developers to build micropayments. When you, like, charge a credit card, right, like the minimum fee, if you ever go to a store that's, like, worried about credit card fees, they'll say you got to buy at least $5 worth of goods, or you got to pay at least 25 cents extra for a credit card. Well, like these folks can do micropayment totally settled between the user without any intermediaries for like sub 25 cent payments, literally sub one cent payments. And it's instant, like as soon as you click it, it happens. And in a lot of ways, the stuff is going to be kind of transparent to a lot of users. It's not like Shopify or all these great applications that like merchants have gotten to use are just going to somehow disappear or be outcompeted. It's very likely that these folks that build great products are just going to start adopting these under the hood. And when you think from Shopify perspective, it's a company that's a technology company. They don't really care how finance works under the hood. They just want it to work. And they want to deliver great products to, to their users. So like all this stuff is kind of happening already and is being in like the competition with regular finance by decentralized companies is happening. And in my point of view, we're winning. And we can actually tackle all possible venues where finance exists, from 
like credit for credit desks that are doing trading, or like actual credit for consumers. Um, this one's like a, probably the hardest and kind of last passion because figuring out identity and credit risk and credit worthiness on chain is still pretty hard. And like execution and speed is probably the, the easiest problem to solve there, or at least the, the, the lowest margin problem. Um, but when all this stuff comes together, you get like really unexpected things happen. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite examples. I spent most of my career at Qualcomm working on mobile phones, dealing with giant carriers like Verizon. And this is a startup. They're using crypto economics to deploy 5G cells that are token incentivized. So it's, we call it deep and decentralized physically uh, incentivized uh, networks. And they are able to offer consumers a $5 data plan. So you have a, five, you, you have a cell phone, you sign up for Helium, looks and works just like a normal mobile carrier, and you're paying five bucks for data. But under the hood, it is running on Solana, it's using NFTs to track all the hotspots, it's issuing Helium tokens to every little hotspot around the city that can track where there's more users on one block and offer more, to more tokens there, and within a day, somebody will go pop a hotspot there without having to go talk to the city, get licensing to put up a tower, and like, do all the stuff that uh, Verizon would need to do. And these are all giant, you know, like a giant list of every possible thing you can have in finance and in ways that are almost not expected, like, like deploying physical networks for, for, cell, for cell towers, for, for cellular networks. Um, all of these things are financial. Um, and they're being built in the ecosystem by a bunch of developers that are you know, working independently. But they're all composed together over the same common protocol. So that's the message. Parallel finance is being built. And it's going to win. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs>